Um, hello. Um, so uh, I'm Martina, and um, I'm part of the research agency Forensic Architecture, based at Goldsmiths uh, University, um, University of London. Um, so we are uh, a research agency dealing with um, cases of human rights violations and environmental violence. Um, and we are using architecture as um, evidence, but also employing architectural methodologies um, to investigate um, our cases. Um, and the case I'm going to talk about today is the killing in Um In order to understand the context of um, this particular event, um, I would like to just introduce you to um, the kind of wider problem of um, and the situation of um, Bedouin villages in um, the um, Nakab or Negev desert in the south of Israel. Um, so um, the Bedouin villages aren't recognized as um, legitimate settlements. And um, the Israeli state has been systematically raiding the villages and procedurally demolishing the houses um, with wider plans of um, reforesting the desert. Um, here we can see the footage of we can see a fragment of the footage of um, Um, so, sorry, I don't think my video is playing. Right, I'll try to uh, verbally explain it then. So this is a fragment of the video taken uh, by activists on, on the morning of um, 18th of January 2017 after the raid on the village of Umbran. Um so the event in Malheran was um, a particularly um, important because um, it happened um, quite unusually during the night and early morning hours um, of um, January 18th. Um, and um, during the event, um, the police troops started spreading around the area in great numbers. And one of the members of the village, Jakub al Kian, was trying to get out of, um, of the village. In a quick series of events, his car went downhill, hitting and killing a police officer, Erez Levy. The car came to a stop a few seconds after. At that point, um, Jakub um, al Kian was um, shot twice. Um, he was later found dead. Um, so what I would like to talk about is how um, this event has been portrayed by the police in the media and how this um, kind of slow procedural violence that I have mentioned at the beginning um, has um, resulted in this accelerated um, um, violence on the body of Jakub al -Kian and how the practices of this procedural uh, violence have been um, kind of very difficult to track and uh, very difficult to manifest visually. And in parallel, the police has done a lot to um, erase any traces of this particular violence that occurred on the night of 18th of January, 2017. Um, so what is here on the screen is the first fragment of footage um, shared by the police um, with the media. And it's um, seemingly an act of transparency. It's, um, it's a footage um, that lasts about 30 seconds and it's taken from um, a helicopter. It's a thermal camera recording. So it shows um, bodies and uh, any objects that emit heat in a darker color, whereas the rest of the landscape is whiter. Um, this footage is um, documenting the moment in, in which the car of Jakub Alkian hits one of the police officers. And this footage, as much as it seems as a transparent depiction of the events, has been used to manipulate the media narrative. Um, Yakub has been later declared a terrorist by the police officers, and this claim has uh, been revoked through a um, kind of careful investigation by forensic architecture in collaboration with um, the uh, activists with active, active skills and later with public committee against torture in Israel. 
So, um, as I said, um, even though this whole event was um, motivated by the premise of trying to demolish and erase the village, um, it actually um, was later twisted in the public media um, into being seemingly a terror attack. Um, so what we have done as an agency, we tried to use the evidence gathered by the activists on the ground in order to create a counter narrative. Um, what is important to realize is that in this kind of new techno visual landscape that is um, kind of um, available to us uh, because of uh, prevalence of recording media, both um, within the police and, and military, um, pretty much all, um, all across the world, there's also um, availability of recording media in the hands of the activists. Um, what we need to know now is to realize the kind of um, constraints and responsibility of um, all of these um, all of this media in order to be able to um, talk about them and be literate um, in the um, visual language. Um, so um, we, we understood that there are um, severe limitations to the footage that uh, the police shared with the media. Um, as you can see, the metadata has been blurred out of the footage that has been played over and over and over. And in a way it has become um, kind of a symbol of the event itself, um, kind of a stand-in for the event that we later on realized is much more complex. Um, here we can see a footage taken by one of the activists, Karen Manor. And in a way through the disruption and distortion, her camera itself is capturing the violence exerted on um, her body. Um, we, um, we weren't able to locate Karen in, in the site. Uh, so what we have done is um, we have recreated the model of the site through the process of photogrammetry and we used her camera recording, which effectively is an extension of her site in the pitch black um, night um, to map um, we mapped the, uh, the footage onto the model and from through this process, we're able to identify her position within the landscape. So this is part um, of the footage that explains this process. In a way, um, Karen's camera becomes the most reliable witness to the chaos and violence on the ground in the aftermath of Jakub's killing. So what you can hear is the characteristic car horn, uh, which indicates that uh, Jakub's car has already uh, been stopped by an oncoming police car. So these are moments after Jakub's um, killing has actually occurred. Um, what is important is to understand that this um, new technovisual landscape, which I have mentioned, it also comes with another type of violence, um, again, targeted towards the activists holding the cameras. So um, what we will see next is a moment in which um, the police is uh, targeting Karen Manor's camera. In this still, um, in the background, but, um, kind of central to the image, you can see a light emitted from Karen Manor's camera. Um, in the foreground, you can see a policeman aiming um, a sponge um, bullet rifle, which is part of the less lethal weaponry. And he's kind of angling it um, towards, towards the light source. What we have done is we have mapped this exact moment captured by a um, GoPro body cam of one of the police officers um, with the landscape and um, with the model. And um, we have uh, then compared uh, the position of Karen Manor and the model at the same time in order to try and see whether this could actually be the moment in which um, a sponge bullet grazed her, her leg. So here on the right, we can see the police officer. Here on the left, we see Karen Manor. We're verifying her position with the footage and we can see that 
as she's shooting a bit of the footage, the police officer shoots towards her and her camera drops down. She ye later yells, he almost took my leg off. Um, so this is one of the examples in, of how um, the activists both are able to capture the violence um, on site, but also about how their presence changes the landscape of violence. Um, later on, um, um, later after, after the killing of Jakub um, Alkian, a group of activists was trying to get closer to the events. And again, um, they're being pushed away by the policemen. And this is a moment in which uh, we can see um, how um, the activists, especially the activists holding the cameras, are uh, targeted with um, pepper spray in order to blind them and um, and um, avoid a possibility of a counter narrative, a kind of an activist counter narrative, uh, being captured and later published. Um, so. Once again, uh, what we have done is we have um, reconstructed all of the possible media sources that were available to us at this particular moment in order to understand the um, choreography of the events. And this is a snapshot showing of how we're working. Um, we are never able to make um, work um, in our investigations with a singular uh, footage or a singular source. Um, what we're always doing is to try and, uh, and synchronize all possible media and um, recreate um, the event from mul multiple points of view. Um, so again, this is breaking up the metonymy and the singularity of that, um, that image that was shown at the beginning, the image that the police shared with the media. What we're trying to do is to show multiple perspectives and understand the intricate intricacies of the choreography and the um, connections between uh, people on site. Um, what I would like to show you next is um, the, I'm going to have to skip this slide, I'm afraid. So this is the final mapping of all the um, media sources onto the landscape. Um, so first we have the footage taken by one of the police officers on site. Then there's a GoPro um, of one of the other police officers. Um, a footage uh, taken by one of the activists, Yela Renan, and a footage taken by Ka uh, Karen Manor. So the cones, um, the light cones that illuminate the landscape show us the extent of um, the um, depiction of the events and the landscape available to us through the sources. So what I would like to highlight here is that as far as there's this great opportunity coming uh, from this new technovisual landscape, at the same time, we need to be careful as to um, being aware about the gaps and the blind spots um, that um, the camera sources carry with them and the danger of um, displaying just one uh, footage source um, because it does solidify um, the blind zones even further. Um, so um, what I would like to finish with is to make two, two major points in this case. One is that um, as far as the erasure happening um, to the villages um, around the Nakab and Nakab Desert, there is a persistence in um, erasure of the evidence. And this translates onto the event in Numal Hiran, in which the, this kind of slow and procedural violence has been accelerated um, by the impact exerted on Yakub Alkian's body. But then the same practices of erasure have been employed by the police through the media. Um, and what is very important is to be able to um, work with this visual material and and become um, literate in it. Um, I think this is all from us. Um, I am sure I extended my time limit, but um, I hope that um, you did not hear. No worries.